Dr. David Clark. Mr. Chair, uh, I rise to take a call on this bill, and I want to challenge members opposite um, who have read their economic textbooks, and I believe there are many. I can see faces across the House that I have heard preaching uh, on the benefits of sound economics, and indeed, particularly, I guess I'm talking to those, yes, interested in Thatcherism 101, those who sleep with Hayek under their pillow. Uh, those who have to run a spray mister at night in their room lest they uh, spontaneously combust, the really dry ones, the really, really dry ones. <laughs> even they, even they will have heard of market failure. And market failure is something they might want to not want to acknowledge, they might not want to acknowledge, but it is something they in their heart of hearts know exists. They know that we have state housing provided in this country so that, so that even those who struggle every day uh, have a backstop, have security, have a safe place to raise their children uh, for future generations, for the benefit of future generations beyond just today. And so those who are walking the tightrope of poverty have a safety net underneath uh, provided by a sound state housing system. Now, as we've heard from many members contributing today, that safety net has been taken away by this government. It is no longer interested in addressing that market failure. It wants to pretend that it does not exist. Well, Mr Chair, in my experience it does still exist. And I can think of very recent examples, a couple of which I would like to outline today. And these examples are poignant to this bill because these are people who would like to ensure that they stay in state housing because of their experience of going into the private housing market. The first story I want to tell Mr Chair is of a uh, family that I visited during my home visits who live in a house that meets their needs roughly. It is the, a house with the right number of bedrooms. It's within a reasonable pro proximity of other family members and therefore they can share care of children and grandchildren. But when I went to visit this family, uh, Mr Chair, the house was run down, it was cold, it's a private rental. They want to be on the state housing list. They used to be on the state housing list, but they got bumped off. They got told they could have a private rental. Now, Mr Chair, I went into that house and I was horrified. It's a house I'd visited many times as a student. It was pretty run down then, but now it has holes in the wall, it has no insulation, and it has young children living in it. And they have uh, runny noses, they have tears in their eyes. Mr Chair, I don't want to be too emotive about this, but these are children who are going to develop preventable health care diseases uh, through their childhoods that we will end up as taxpayers bearing the cost of for their whole lives, that they will end up bearing the cost of uh, their whole lives in their wider family. Now, I sought to intervene on behalf of this family. In fact, they asked me to intervene. They asked me to represent their cause because their landlord would not listen. They want simply some insulation, for which there are subsidy schemes. They want the holes in the wall repaired. But, Mr Speaker, what happened when I did seek to intervene, when my office sought to go alongside them to meet their landlord, was that their landlord said, no, you may not bring a representative with you to this discussion. If you do, you risk being turfed out. That is the kind of bullying that can exist in the private market where the need is so great, is so great, where there is so much unmet need for social housing that private landlords can exploit the system. A good state housing, social housing provider ensures that those private landlords are kept honest, that they do have to meet basic needs because they otherwise cannot compete in the market. But that situation currently does not exist, at least not in Dunedin where I live. I have heard uh, just yesterday of another case where there is a Dunedin family living in a state house that has just had its fire escape removed, and they have been told it is not coming back. It's the second one I've heard of in the last fortnight, where a fire escape has been removed from the second store of a building that children sleep in that is not coming back. And that, Mr Chair, is emblematic to me of what is going on in the social housing sector. The government is physically, actually physically dismantling the state houses that provide uh, care, that provide security for the most vulnerable citizens in our society. And here we have in this bill an attempt to flog these state houses off. 
Mr Chair. These examples point to the direction. And of course, the state housing sales in Dunedin, Mr Chair, the state housing sales in Dunedin uh, will continue. And we've seen many come onto the market. Many are vacant in Dunedin currently, despite the need, despite the need, despite the families that come through my door every week, despite the families that come through my colleague Claire Curran's door every week in Dunedin, those houses are kept vacant because of the criteria the government applies. It says the need is not great enough. How great does the need have to be? How great does the need have to be? Surely when there are children in private rental accommodations getting, un, un, getting preventable disease, the need is great enough to want to provide state housing. And yet in Dunedin, they say the projections, uh, Minister Smith has released papers previously saying that they expect the need for the 1,500 state houses in Dunedin to be no longer. They are expecting it to go down to 1,000 state houses and they are selling them off now. This is a government determined to get out of the social housing sector, determined to wash its hands of the social problems they are creating by not meeting that market failure. And Mr Chair, this will have very long-term consequences for New Zealand. And that is why we on this side of the House will continue vigorously to oppose this bill at every stage. We note that the public have not been invited to make submissions on this bill, and I think that that is uh, shameful and very telling of the government's agenda here. I doubt we'll hear much from the other side during the debate. I'd like to be proven long. I'd like, long. I'd like them to stand up and tell me how in their heart of hearts they don't think this market failure is going to hurt future families. I'd love them to get up and speak to it, but I actually suspect they want to see this bill through the House as fast as it will go, because they do not care about these people. This is a government that does not care about these people. It is shameful. They may go to sleep with spray misters in their rooms. They are expensive spray misters that not everyone can afford, I am sure. They may go to sleep with Hayek under their pillows, but they should not sleep easily at night knowing that they are doing away with these protections for our vote most vulnerable. The place in the market that ensures that private providers are kept honest, that they must meet a certain minimum standard in order to be providing social housing. This dismantling of our, <coughs> excuse me, this dismantling of our state housing sector cannot be allowed to continue, Mr Chair. We will vigorously oppose this bill at every stage on its reading through this House. Mr. Chair.